Hi, my name is Tiffany, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make river coaster with epoxy resin and wood. To make these coasters, I'm using a piece of pine wood that I got from the store that's 6 by 36 inches and it's 3 eighths in thickness. I, however, recommend using something a little bit thicker uh, because thin wood tends to uh, warp and I realized that as I was making this project. So right now I'm just uh, marking it to go ahead and cut it in half. After cutting it in half, I'm clamping it down because I'm going to cut along each half with a jigsaw. And when I'm cutting with a jigsaw, I am just cutting in random curves. Since I'm using a frame to where I'm going to pour the resin, I'm marking it so I can cut it to fit inside the frame. Here I'm using a sanding block so I can clean off the edges so that way there's no wood particles uh, left from the cutting. But it doesn't have to be smooth, you just have to clean it up. To seal the frame, I'm using 100% silicone caulk. And what you do is you just, just go around all around the edges uh, to make sure no resin leaks through. And then you want to go ahead and smooth it out with your finger just to make sure that it's completely sealed and don't forget to do the four uh, corners of the frame next i'm using silicone spray and what i do is i spray this on the uh, frame and this avoids the resin from uh, sticking so when you when this is cured and you go to take it out it makes it easier to take it out of the frame next i'm measuring at eight and a half inches once this is cured i'm going to cut it in half and because this is going to be four by four coasters this extra half an inch actually allows me to recut it if needed so you want to make sure there's eight and a half inches uh, at the edges and the middle. Now I'm clamping it down using small pieces of wood and these pieces of wood are covered in tuck tape in case the resin leaks onto it, it doesn't get stuck to the wood. Clamping down the wood uh, avoids the resin leaking under the wood. Once you have it all prepped, you can go ahead and mix your resin and the color. Um, I love using blue-green. It's one of my favorite colors to use on pigments. And now we get to the fun part. I'm using a resin that it cannot be more than a quarter inch in thickness, so I have to put it, uh, I have to pour it in layers. After you pour it, you want to go ahead and spread it around, make sure it's all uh, touching all of the edges and also just leave it for a few minutes so all the bubbles can rise and then use a small torch to uh, get rid of all the bubbles. Before the working time is over, you want to watch it for bubbles and torch it about every 5 to 10 minutes. After the first layer is cured, you can go ahead and pour the second layer. This is the last layer, so you want to make sure that this layer is leveled with the wood. If you like this video so far, uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you can watch more of my resin projects.
just like I did with the first layer, I'm moving the resin around, making sure it's all the way to the edges. Keep in mind the working time before the resin starts curing. I personally like using a resin that has a 40 minute working time. As it gets close to that curing time, I actually move it around and I create these lines that you see here, which uh, simulates the water current. So you want to do that towards the end. If you do it too early, uh, the lines will actually fade away. So even after I checked that the tray is leveled, it started overflowing from one side, but that's okay because I can fix this after the resin is cured. When I put this frame together, I nailed it, so I'm using a rubber mallet to take all the sides out. But when you build your own frame, you can use screws instead. I'm using a couple small pry bars to take it out of the frame. You want to pry it along the edges slowly. Don't uh, jank it or try to you know, force it out because it can warp it or even worse, it can crack it. Uh, so just work it slowly until it comes out. So the resin that spilled onto the wood was a little too thick for me to sand it. It would have taken me forever to try to sand it down to the wood. So I'm going to grind it first with a Dremel. After you're done grinding, you want to feel it with your hands to make sure you didn't miss any spots. Uh, you want it as flush as possible to make the sanding process easier. So to start the sanding process, I'm starting with 200 grit and we're going to work our way up all the way up to 3000 grit. When sanding with 200 grit, you want to make sure that you sand it really well. Since I had to grind a spot, I want to make sure that I sand it down until it's flush and smooth. Every time you change grits, you want to make sure you wipe it down and get rid of all the dust before you go on to the next grit. I start with sanding at 400 grit. And to do that, it's really simple. Just have a cup of water so you can soak the top of your piece and start sanding. After 800 grit, I start looking for sanding marks. Sanding marks are little scratches that look like squiggly lines on the resin. And if I notice that it has sanding marks, I go back to 400 or 600 grit and I work my way back up until I see that there's no more sanding marks. So I decided to stain the coasters instead of leaving them in the natural color of wood. So before staining, I'm using wood conditioner. This actually helps uh, the stain to look all even so it doesn't uh, look blotchy when you stain it. And I'm staining it prior to cutting it so that way I don't have to stain each individual piece. Uh, but keep in mind when you cut it, you are still going to have to uh, stain the sides. You can do multiple coats of stain if you want the stain to be darker. You just have to let it dry in between coats. And you can also stain the bottom of the coasters. But since I'm covering it with uh, cork, I decided not to stain the bottom.
So I have the table saw set up to cut this right through the middle. And you want to make sure that you use a fine blade. Right now I'm using a 60T. Uh, the finer the better. This avoids uh, chipping the resin and it makes it easier to sand. Once you cut it, uh, you can trim it as needed to make sure that it's four inches in width. And now I'm starting the sanding process all over again, but just in the edges. You want to do as much as possible when you have it all in one solid piece, uh, because when you cut it all in individual pieces, it will take a lot longer because you have to do each piece individually. I'm cutting the edges so that way I can start with a clean cut on each end. Uh, you want to make sure you use a fine blade on here too. After that, I measure to 4 inches and then I cut each piece. After cutting them, I go ahead and start the sanding process all over again on the unfinished sides that just got cut. Just like I mentioned before, you have to pre-stain and then stain the unfinished sides. I actually decided to do a second coat of stain while I was at it. I let the stain dry for 24 hours and then after that I sealed it with teak oil. Uh, I left the teak oil on the coasters for about 15 minutes and then I wiped them off. I like using teak oil because it leaves a natural look on the wood and it doesn't have any sheen. So now we finally reached one of the last steps for this project. Right now what I'm doing is I'm measuring out the squares I'm going to cut out uh, to glue under the coasters. Um, I'm using a roll of uh, cork and just marking it with another coaster I already had made that's a little bit smaller. So I'm just drawing squares around and uh, cutting them individually. So to glue the cork uh, to the coasters, I'm using clear Gorilla Glue and I like using one that only takes seconds to dry and uh, I actually put them under a box or something heavy so that way they stay in place while they dry. After I'm done gluing them all, I pour more weight on all of the coasters so I use several books and I leave them overnight so that way the glue can cure. So finally, this is the last step, which is polishing the resin. And what I do is I use my Gears Ultra Cut Compound and I apply it on the resin side only, not on the wood, in a circular motion for a few seconds. And then after that, I just uh, wipe it off and that leaves it pretty shiny. And if you like how the coasters look before you polish them, you don't have to do this step. But I didn't like how the uh, thick oil left them. They just looked a little smudgy, so I decided to polish them. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you can continue to watch more of my epoxy resin projects. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to write me in the comments.